the admissions committees are not going to accept you because you checked off all of the boxes. The admissions committees are going to accept students who... What's going on guys? Dr. Ryan Gray here for another video on the Medical School Headquarters YouTube channel. Hope you're having a great day and I hope this video comes at an opportune time for you so that you can fill out your extracurricular descriptions properly. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button to be notified of more great videos here every week. And we actually have multiple videos, multiple days a week. So stay tuned for all of those great videos. And actually some of the stuff that I'm gonna be showing you are from application renovation videos that come out on Tuesday. So if you don't watch those, those are actually I think the most watched videos on the channel right now. So you are missing out. So overall, let me let me give you a brief kind of breakdown of extracurricular descriptions and how they differ from application to application. I think we should start there. So the extracurricular descriptions, or as uh, a lot of the applications call it, the activities section on AMCAS. So if you're applying to MD schools on AMCAS, you get 700 characters. Three of the 15 that you can include on your application on AMCAS, three of those you can mark as most meaningful. So 15 total activities, three of those 15 can be marked as most meaningful. When you mark it as most meaningful, an extra box opens up and you have an additional 1,325 characters, a separate 1,325 characters not a total of 2,025 characters, but your 700 character description and a 1,325 most meaningful essay to go with it. So that's AMCAS. On ACOMIS, there is no limit. The sections are broken down a little bit more, but you only have 600 characters. It's 100 characters less. And for TMD SAS, again, no limit. The section breakdown is a little bit different, a little bit more rigid, I would say, potentially even. TMD SAS is nice because it lets you put in future activities. One of the things that TMD SAS does not let you do very well is actually write anything about the activity. You only get 300 characters. Now I'm friends with the guys over at TMD SAS, all the, the team over there, and I yell at them all the time that they need more characters. They, they gave in a little bit, and they, very similar to AMCAS, have three, uh, three activities that you can mark as most meaningful. Now you get 500 characters extra for those three activities. So 700 characters for AMCAS, 600 for ACOMIS, 300 for TMD SAS. Now the question is, how do you write those activity descriptions? Now I'm gonna start and I'm gonna focus on how do you not write them? Because I think, and, and I get a lot of negativity for this that I always focus on what not to do. And that's because all of you are making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And so hopefully if I can focus on the, the same mistakes over and over and over again, when you are writing yours, you avoid those mistakes and you'll probably make other mistakes, which is okay, but hopefully you'll start to end up in the right place. Now, the majority of what I'm gonna talk about fits for a Comus and AMCAS, 700 characters, 600 characters. For TMD SAS, the storytelling that I'm gonna to try to tell you to focus on, or that I'm going to tell you to try to focus on, is not going to work. TMD SAS just doesn't give you enough space. 600 characters is enough, 700 is plenty, and I'll show you some good examples as well. But first, let's look at the bad examples. So as I'm recording this, I'm looking at my, my iPad here, and I have an application brought up. This is actually uh, from Application Renovation Season 2, Episode 1, if you wanna go watch that full, uh, the full video where I break down this whole application, you can see all of my writing on here. But there were a few in here, a few activities that I wanted to highlight even more just to, to show you. And so one of the biggest things is writing an essay format. And so when you look, or not essay, resume format. And so when you look at the description, so you can see here the description, you can see this one's marked as a most meaningful. When you look at that, 
Number one, it's bullet pointed. Do not bullet point your activity descriptions, period, end of story, with a few exceptions. There's always exceptions to this rule. Um, so in general, do not bullet point. And I'll, I'll tell you when you can. So as you're looking at this, what I see here is basic job descriptions. Worked as a teacher, right? The basic job description. Worked as a teacher, educating this many students. Assisted as a school nurse. Worked as a big sister. Just basic job duties. Uh, worked as a bartender, right? My duties included waiting on tables, working to ensure customers' desires and orders were fulfilled. Well, of course, right? That's what a waitress does, a server does. When you're working on your activities, if you are writing stuff and you are thinking, will the person know what this job is? Will the person know what is what a server does? Will the person know what an EMT does? Will the person know what a scribe does? If you're like, yes, they'll know, then don't write those basic job descriptions in your activity. You don't need to do that. Focus on the story, focus on the impact. So let's talk about that real quick before we dive even further into this. When I'm talking about focusing on the story and focusing on the impact, what I want you to focus on is how that activity impacted you or how you were able to impact that activity. Don't just tell me what you did. That doesn't tell me anything about you. The goal of the application, whether it's the primary application, the secondary application, the interviews, is to show who you are. The admissions committees are not going to accept you because you checked off all of the boxes. The admissions committees are going to accept students who they get to know and who they realize will be good students not who checked off all of the boxes, okay? So from a story perspective, let's look at what a server can do. So from a story perspective, let's look at how this student wrote about being a server. Now they were a server at a winery. And so you can see here, server at a winery. One of my favorite tasks was to give tours of the facility. So now all of a sudden, I am picturing myself taking a tour of a winery. We can picture the grapes and the, the buildings and the barrels and everything else. Every weekend, people from all over the world would come to sample our locally produced wine. So now I can see that this person is interacting with a large variety of people. And, and the, the student doesn't say, because I interacted with a large amount of people, I was able to build my communication skills. No, it tells me right away that this person was interacting with these people. So I probably can, can extrapolate that from the story. I would guide them through the basics of how they were made. Uh, I enjoyed walking the group through the cellar that held our oak barrels, right? I'm picturing this, I'm smelling it. It's very engaging, very interesting. Uh, mellow lactic fermentation, gentle bubbling of CO2, right? Story and, and just visuals are great. Many were quietly aging reds that had been placed there for several months, up to a few years before. A few more were grapes that I had helped to harvest. So now I can say, oh, help to harvest. So this person is also probably hardworking, willing to kind of get down into the dirt and, and interact um, and, and pick those grapes. Awesome. It was rewarding to be an integral part of the winemaking process. Oh, team player. Without saying team player, this person just said they're a team player. They're willing to go and, and pick the grapes and, and walking around and communicating with people. This is an excellent story of someone who is a server, right? Yes, it was a server at a winery, but you can transform your experience of being a server into something similar. I don't care, right, that, that you learned how to take orders and did it without errors and were good at customer service. That's how most students would write about this, right? Looking at it, this is how many students would write about this activity. I provided wine samples to customers. Well, yeah, duh, that's what you kind of do, right? Gave tours to customers, okay. Harvested grapes for winemaking, right? Just the basic stuff. And then where students start to go into a sales pitch is improved communication skills by talking to customers from all over the country. Made sure every customer was taken care of, right? The students tried to focus so much on here is how 
I am better. Here's how my skills were built. And that is not the goal of these extracurricular activities, at least in my mind. The goal is to show who you are. And through showing who you are, you then show those skills that you gathered, right? We talked about it here. We talked about how this student, we talked about how this student was able to talk about her communication skills without saying that her communication skills were increased. She was able to talk about being a hard worker without saying, I'm a hard worker and I'm dedicated. She was able to talk about how she was a good team player without saying, I built up my team skills because making wine is a team process with lots of different components that go into it. That is good extracurricular writing. So that was a quick example of being a server, something that a lot of you have done. Now let's look at a good and potentially bad example of what students write about being a tutor. Again, something very common that students do. Now, so going back to my iPad, and actually what you're seeing here is the draft of my next book, the Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application. Unfortunately, it won't be out in time for this 2021 cycle, applying in 2020. But hopefully, if you're applying in 2021, it will be available then. And so this is uh, one chapter of the book that you're seeing. And so you can see here the the example that I have here is a tutor. And this is a great example, I think, right? My first semester of tutoring, I was paired with Charlie. So I'm like, oh, a story. Great. 45-year-old physics major and veteran Charlie cared more about learning the information than his grade. He was motivated to do well on every uh, assignment, lab, and test always seems fully focused. One day, near the end of the semester, Charlie sat down and said with a smile, I changed my major to chemistry. I was stunned and a little thrilled. I made an impact on Charlie's life and had been a part of his discovery of his love of chemistry. This fueled my motivation to build a career in higher education. Only 574 characters. So this would have worked in a lot of places, right? On AMCAS and ACOMIS. So that is great. Now you look at this and you go, well, it doesn't tell me anything about tutoring. No, because you know what tutoring is. You know what a tutor does, which if you look at this bad example here, I tutored students in chemistry, created lessons plans. You can see it's written like a resume without the I tutored, I created. It's just tutored students, created lessons for students and checked in on their progress. Yes, that's what tutors do. You don't need to tell me that. I know what tutors do. And so do the people reading your application. Listening to their specific situations, I was able to craft lessons to the needs of each student, right? You're trying to sell how amazing you are at, at being flexible and crafting all this information to students. You don't need to do that. Met with students weekly to answer all of their questions. Help students prepare for a test. Yes, that's what tutors do. The good example is a story of impact. The bad example is basic description. Don't do this and do this. Stories of impact. That's all that I want you to think about as you are working through your application, through these activity descriptions. Again, don't look at this as an opportunity to check off boxes and go, I need to show that I'm hardworking. I need to show that I'm adaptable. I need to show that I'm resilient. Don't do that. It's not needed. A common question that I get is whether or not to include hobbies in your activity section. And I would say if you have room for it, include it. Now here's a good hobby description to check out about dancing. And the student does sell themselves a little bit at the end, but I, I'm not completely against a little bit of the pitch. If you need it there, if you want it there, if you're like, I just, I have to have it there, that's okay. But the rest of it is really good. Just description about dancing and, and what the student likes. So hopefully this helps you understand hobbies a little bit. Now, what about research? How do you do storytelling in research? How do you not sell your skills in research? Well. Let me show you first how a student tried to sell themselves with their research description. Again, this is uh, from a draft of my pre-med playbook, Guide to the Medical School Application Book. 
And the student said, I performed research for a summer internship at the neuroradiology laboratory of Dr. Smith. That, if you don't know the setup of an application and, and entering in a lot of this information, that's wasted space. You're gonna put the contact information, you're gonna put the location in that activity already. You don't need to repeat it in the activity description. A lot of students do that. So it's just wasted space. I worked both on the clinical and animal research side, focusing on the study of uh, cerebral saccular aneurysms. Okay, it's a little bit of what they're doing. I'm not against that. I don't know if it's really needed, but I'm not against it. It's okay. And here we go into my responsibilities, right? The job description. We don't need this stuff. Chart review, looking at the accuracy of ICD-9 codes. Helped advance my skills in the research software. I can guarantee you that the admissions office is not sitting there thinking, I need a student who understands research software. Right? The student is so focused on selling skills that they just go off into the weeds here. It's just, it's not important. I had the opportunity to see both sides of clinical application of using microcoils to treat aneurysms and to be part of the animal lab research to better understand the mechanisms of aneurysm growth and healing. Again, you're going to learn all about aneurysms in medical school. You trying to sell me that you understand aneurysms doesn't show me who you are, the impact that you had on this position. I was required to learn a large diverse set of skills in a short amount of time. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's what the student is doing, and that's what many of you do. Avoid this by telling stories. Strengthen my time management skills. Again, the admissions office isn't checking off boxes going, does this person have time management skills? Does this person have communication skills? Does this person have research software skills? It's not what they're doing. So let's look at a better example of research in some respects and how a student was able to write about research. Now this is being a research assistant. Maybe it's a little bit different than bench lab stuff, but you get a good idea of how a student could potentially write something good. So this student is in here saying, I worked with my mentor to develop articles and workshops on trauma and resilience for hundreds of journalists, humanitarian workers, and healthcare providers. So setting up a little bit about what this position is, Obviously, all of that isn't going to fit into the job description or job title that you enter into the activity. So, okay, I, I have a little context. Now let's jump into the story. And here we go. At a training for human rights workers, I spoke with an aid worker recently uh, who returned from South Sudan who described the depression and homelessness, hopelessness he experienced upon returning home. We spoke about how chronic exposure to trauma influenced the sustainability of his work. So just understanding a person, right? Throughout the training, we worked to normalize his traumatic stress responses, educate him about protective measures and resources available to frontline workers. So this is a story about a person, not I built my communication skills. I was able to solve problems. I was able to do X, Y, Z. It's just a story of a of, of this student interacting with a person. It is my hope that these lessons will inform my work as a future physician advocate. So a little take home message there at the end, which is always nice if you can fit it in. How is this going to affect you? How is this strengthening you as a person? How is this going to impact your future as a physician? These little take home messages are something that you can write about. Now let's look at another good example from the same student who we just saw an example for for the research assistant and look at this pediatric rehab volunteer again where students go wrong is they try to sell their skills they try to show that they were able to to impact a student or not impact but impact a, a patient in a way that they were able to build their communication skills and understand something about healthcare. Again, check boxes are not important here. The admissions committee members don't need you to show them that you understand what medicine is like. That's not the goal. So let's look at this one here. I've, I've worked with children with a variety of physical impairments from CP to torticollis. Great. Straight up. Okay, let's go. Story time. I first met Sarah, a child with CP, for a pool rehabilitative session after recent surgery. We laughed together. I lowered her into the water, sharing in the joy of her body's buoyancy. 
I offered her encouragement for the next hour. She fought rigidity in her legs. While volunteering has been a wonderful experience, I want to be able to provide the type of medical care that would help this child achieve the greatest mobility possible for her. So now the student is, is going into a little bit of what I talk a lot about in the personal statement is why do you want to be a physician? There's a little bit of that here. There's this story of this student impacting this patient's life in a way and, and then having a little bit of a reflection saying, I want more, I need more. As a volunteer with pediatric patients, I'm struck by the intensity of emotions I feel when they struggle and when they succeed. It just shows the impact of the position on her. I talked about it earlier. What is your impact on the position? What is the position's impact on you? Right. This doesn't say I, I was an amazing communicator. I was a hard worker. I learned X, Y, or Z. It's here's the story of a patient that I interacted with. All right, so let's look at another not so good example of research. Again, another example from the book. This student here, research was always one of the domains I wanted to explore. Again, the sales pitch of, I, I like research too, right? As if it's a requirement to make sure that the admissions committee member, the reviewer of your application, makes sure that you, that you like research, right? It's a, just a very generic and weird statement. I volunteered in research about sleep apnea twice a week where I analyzed and arranged data using whatever that is and Excel. So again, very nuanced and specific information that just isn't important. I was offered a job by the supervisor to work in the lab as a student assistant. Again, not important. The student, I understand why a student puts it there. The student puts it there to say, hey, they liked me so much they offered me a job. That must mean I'm pretty amazing, I'm a hard worker, and I'm competent. I was thrilled to accept this position alongside my other job as a medical scribe. Okay, now look, even more of a sales pitch. Look, I can handle multiple things at the same time. Again, not important. My work primarily focuses on reporting on results and helping with manuscript data for publication. Again, job description stuff. Research involves a lot of that. Most people understand that. You don't need to write that. So far, I have learned how to generate, read, and analyze data and how to troubleshoot problems. Sales pitch, I'm a problem solver. Not necessary. Additionally, my teamwork skills have improved significantly and I learned how good collaboration with my other team members produces the best results. From reading this, I don't know who this student is. I just know that they think they're a good problem solver. They think they have good teamwork skills. They think they are awesome because they were offered a job. They think they're a good multitasker, multi juggler, whatever, because they have a job as well uh, as a scribe. So there's nothing here that tells me much about the student. Tell a story that shows your impact in these positions. Show the impact of you on the position show the impact of the position on you. So when I say show the impact of you on the position, uh, something that a lot of students think about is, let's say you were part of a fraternity or sorority and you were part of the like philanthropic side of things uh, as the chair of philanthropy. Talk about, instead of talking about how you were able to organize events and, and uh, impact people's lives in that way, talk about how many events did you organize? How many people were you in charge of? How much money did you raise? That shows impact. Those kinds of numbers show impact without you saying that you built your communication skills, without you building your teamwork skills. So another very common activity for students is shadowing. And there are many ways to do shadowing or write about shadowing in an application. For me, shadowing isn't very impactful. It's a very passive experience for you. And so number one, marking it as most meaningful for me just doesn't make sense because the most meaningful designation is most meaningful for you as a person, as a human being, not most meaningful for you on your journey to medicine. So that's kind of just a, a sidebar for shadowing. But shadowing itself, because it's very passive and usually because you shadow lots of physicians, hopefully, you either have a couple options. You can either list all of the shadowing separately, which on a Comus and TMDSAS you potentially could, or you bunch it together in one activity on AMCAS. And if you do it in one activity on AMCAS, it's okay to kind of bullet point those to say total hours, total time, put like the main contact information, maybe the person who knows you the, the best, 
as the contact person. And then you say, okay, line here, shadowed Dr. Smith, uh, GI doctor, these dates, these hours, shadowed uh, Dr. Wilson, uh, uh, cardiologist, these days, these hours, right? And you just list, that's okay. If you want to do it in more of a story form, here's how uh, potentially not to do it. So this student, and I'll have a good example following. This student says, I was very eager, eager to know more about, uh, more deeply about clinical life. Again, okay, great. I don't need the sales pitch that says you were, you were eager for it, which drove me to shadow an endocrinologist. Again, for me, that first sentence is a wasted sentence because you obviously are telling me that you shadowed because this is a whole experience. Endocrinology was always my interest due to the fact that my brother has a pituitary tumor. Okay, so a little bit of personal information I think is great. I had the opportunity to watch the patients closely, hear their complaints, and feel their worries. So again, that's kind of a basic idea of what shadowing is. You get to hear things and, and experience uh, the whole visit. So not, not super helpful. I developed more compassion and relatedness to the patients. I, I don't need to know, right? The sales pitch, I'm compassionate, I'm, I'm empathetic. I can connect with these patients. I also got to know a wide range of diagnoses that I had not known before. Yeah, there's, there's gonna be even more that you don't know about that you're gonna learn in medical school. So again, just super generic stuff that just doesn't help the reader. So if we look at this good example of shadowing, this student says, when I first meet a physician, I ask about treatment gaps and potential improvements in the healthcare system. So interesting little twist. It kind of gives me some insight into the student and what they are interested in, what they're concerned about with healthcare. The OBGYN, the surgeon, and the pediatrician uh, name the same need access to effective and affordable mental health care for their patients, right? So the student is kind of highlighting a, uh, a, an area of medicine that the student really likes. Watching a surgeon counsel his patients for surgery or a pediatrician speak with her patient about distorted eating confirm for me that all health is mental health. So again, the focus is on mental health here. It's not necessarily a good thing to only focus in on one thing, but for this specific student, it matched with a lot of her application with where she was coming from, so it works here. In addition, I've heard physicians voice frustration with structural barriers they face providing care to their patients within the healthcare system. Their stories resonate deeply with me and galvanize me to work toward developing solutions to challenges in healthcare. So this is an interesting one, right? It's not a story, it's, but it's impact of that position on her. Having these conversations shows the reader what this student is interested in. This student is interested in mental health. This student is interested in treatment gaps and improvements in the healthcare system. And the student at the very end says it galvanizes me to work toward developing solutions to challenges in the healthcare system. So without selling that this student is a problem solver, she's telling the story of the impact and how it's driving her forward in this world. So I could go on and on and on about all of the different things and different experiences and, and different everything that, that you could come up with to put in an application. I obviously can't give you examples of everything. The, the book hopefully will be out uh, in several months. It'll have a lot more examples in there, breaking down good examples and bad examples. Um, so, so keep an eye on that. If you haven't seen my other books, the pre-med playbook is the series kind of like Chicken Soup for the Soul, the Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Personal Statement, Guide to the MCAT, and Guide to the Medical School Interview. So go check out those, and then Guide to the Medical School Application will be out as soon as possible. Remember, at the end of the day, for your activities, don't sell skills. Talk about the story and the impact. That's the biggest thing that I need you to take away from this whole conversation.